Sanctuary, directed yeah. by none other than Jonathan Frakes himself. This is an, uh, I just watched the episode again this morning. Okay. It's been, a, it's been a while, so I'm like, oh, let me get caught up. And oh, this episode uh, just plays on so many things that, you know, not only are great in the 24th century, but apply very well to the world we live in today. Uh, what was your experience getting on the show? You found out you're going to be on a sci-fi show. Um, does screaming like a little girl count? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely <laughs> counts. Uh, it was, it was like, I don't know, it was something out of a, you know, I mean, I've been acting for like 15, almost 16 years now. And, but this was a whole different element because I'm a sci-fi fan. I'm a fan of the Orville. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit more, it was special and it was hard to contain myself because like there was a while where, like this is this is the dream this is not happening this is mm -hmm. this is too good to be true is somebody just gonna like pull the rug out from me and say psych um, <laughs> psych <-fi. laughs> psych you're not going on the show <laughs> <laughs> just playing we were you. just practicing with casting people. Yeah, we're getting, you know, we're getting our game going. Yeah, we're going to tell the other person they got it. But um, it was just an amazing thing to, you know, get. And um, and like I cherish it like to this day. Well, you, you like it's, from what I've seen, uh, like on IMDb, check it out, everybody. Sean Andrew right there. You, you, you'll see the, the long list of stuff, you know, Law and Order, Prodigal Son which is a family of the Orville type show because Halston Sage is on it. Uh, the Tick, which was great on Amazon. The Blacklist, uh, it goes on and on and on. You know, you're playing pretty much a human all the yeah. time, but now you're going <laughs> in and slapping on this makeup, yeah. which we do have some footage of you getting this makeup put on, yeah. uh, <laughs> which seems like an absolute treat. But also, how, how was the makeup process for you? Um. Yeah, as you said, it was a treat because it's like I'm I, um, I am also a cosplayer, mm -hmm. so wearing like makeup and prosthetics is fun, you know. It's 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 and then having it done by like a Emmy uh, winning uh, uh, makeup artist was even you know more awesome. Um, Gerald Quist, like he did the makeup. He's the guy that did my makeup, and it's just like the the transformation. And just, you know, seeing the before and after and just looking at myself in the mirror for like long periods of time and just mm -hmm. like, is, I was like, I was, I was like, I was like, I was like nine yeah. years old again, you know, yeah. an actor's dream, but also a cosplayer's dream. You know, oh, as yeah. A, as a cosplayer, you're, you, you pretty much get to play a normie in a, yeah. a lot of the stuff you do. This is the time you actually got to <laughs> dress up in something that's more aligned with your passion. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just it's uh I don't know, dude. It's just it's a trip out. Like and I was so happy to do it and I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Well what did what did they tell you about uh your character Torin? Uh Torin of course is the main Mocklin in this episode that, you know, spurs off the entire story. Him and his and his partner have they're smuggling a female Mocklin baby in a suitcase as you do when you're sneaking babies around. Mm. And uh, it sets off the entire sanctuary story. So what did they tell you? Or did you know anything about the Orville or Mocklins or, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, watched, I watched the show and, um, but like during the audition process, they only gave me like sides of that scene. So mm -hmm. I had to kind of like go way back in a backstory and just, you know, go revisit the Mocklin Society and I was like, oh, so it, so it made sense in my head. So when I did the audition, like the, it would come out as like, try to be truthful and try to be in the moment. Like, you know, we're, you know, this is our daughter and we don't want her to be changed. Yeah. We want her as she is. So that was a lot of layers, a lot of layering stuff and the element of danger. Cause if we do get caught, it's, you know, you know what happens yeah and um so it was you know it was an interesting process but like i'm glad that you know i came to the audition with that all in my head and and then just let it come out and also you know studying the mocklin cadence and i tore it 
mm -hmm. speaking in that, you know. You get to speak that high American accent, which, <laughs> which most aliens get to speak in on most shows. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it was nice and reserved and it was in my wheelhouse and it was, you know, it was great. It was great. And mostly just about all your scenes were with uh, the very talented, amazing Peter Macon. Yes. Uh, so that's basically that's basically your dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. How, uh, the entire time you were you know on set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even in the makeup chair we were doing our makeup together, and and yeah, yeah and that's his voice too. That's like that's mm -hmm. not even a put on. That's his voice. And he's talking. You know, we we're talking about his you know family. Really nice dude, and um, it was just just cool, man. <laughs> I was yeah. Like, and I, oh! <laughs> I remember one thing he said when he plays Bordas. He he always remembers that Mocklins don't speak English, n you know, natively. Mm -hmm. So he's always thinking. He said that uh, as Bordas, the character, anytime someone speaks to him in English, he's you know he's kind of going through the motions of translating it in his head and then responding. Yeah, you know, like yeah. A, you know, like a non-native English speaker goes. Now, um, well, I have to I have to interject this really quickly. Seth MacFarlane shows up on set. Mm -hmm. There you are. What oh, happens? Uh, um, mm, what happens? What happened? Uh, <laughs> He's just like, hey man, what's up? And he walks away. Just the, 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 the kid in my head, the giddy school boy was just jumping in my, in like a little part of my brain is going, Seth MacFarlane, oh my God. <laughs> but then I was like, be cool, be yeah. cool. You're a professional, yeah. you know. Relax. It's it's very hey, rare that someone gets to be you know like a a, a fanboy of their boss. Yeah, and like when he introduced himself and like I was like Mr. McFarlane and he just called me Seth and it's just like you know he said he loved my audition tape and I was like you know I'm very like a modest person as it is like I don't take compliments very well yeah. and it's just great. But then when that happened and then. When I found out John Frakes was the director, yes, I was just like there were like explosions going on in my head. Yeah, and um, it's just it was a lot. It was like information overload, a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, well, you handle it very well. You handle it very well. Well, then, I, well, yeah, I, have to, I mean, you have to act like you've been there before, you know. Yeah. And and it's a it's a great experience but you, you got to do the work man yeah well the fact that you weren't running around is an testament to you to you as a professional you yeah know? i wasn't running around but i was walking around this the lot looking at all the cool stuff in the yeah in the <laughs> stage but you didn't tell them that You're, no i ain't real them that. Cool. no no real i was cool like oh uh, i got time uh i'm gonna dip out and just uh take a walk around <laughs> see what, all this cool stuff what uh you know what was the experience like being directed by Jonathan Frakes? Or can you even remember it? Because you're obviously oh, yeah. excited. Oh I mean, yeah, if I was that like, excited. I hardly remember it. <laughs> he's very, you know, like he's right. He's talking with you. He's he's he's, he's very animated. Mm -hmm. He's an animated director, and he's very excited. You see that he's very passionate about it, and and he's very hands on. And he also he's he's a he listens to you. You know, mm -hmm. if you have something like an idea and he'll listen, he'll, he'll think about it. He's like, all oh, right, try that. And same with Seth. Seth was the same thing. Seth was also giving us direction. Like he's on the monitor and he had a mic that we could hear him when we were on the uh, other side of the stage. And it was just, you know, it was a very cohesive thing, you know? Very nice. Well, it's great that, you know, well, cause you know, Jonathan Frakes, of course, uh, well, Seth MacFarlane too, they're actors as well. So, that, I mean, they would know that you're the one embodying this character. You're the one that needs to feel comfortable with, you know, the, the character as it is in your head. So it's mm -hmm. nice to know that, you know, I'm sure there's other productions out there like, no, you will say it the way that I tell you to say it. But this is more of, uh, uh, of an experience where people are working together, like you said, cohesive. Yeah, yeah, even with the, the, the um, DP that was there, like if a shot was off, like they everybody would like congregate and try to make it work mm -hmm. and then you know would do it again and that's why like i try to make sure i do what i what i'm supposed to do so we can make it move smoothly yeah. you know 
Yeah, so. you don't want to be. I mean, from my experience with working on sets and being the actor, I was the thing I was the most afraid of is slowing down anything because there's so many people working there, so many people doing their job, and they're relying on you to do their job. So I could, I was hardly paying attention to anything else that's going on. Like just do everything right. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't yeah. want to, you don't even want to slow down the caterer. Yeah, you know, I mean, because yeah, there's. When you're doing something, there's the actor and the character. The actor knows where to stand, where to not not to go too fast, not to go too slow. And the character is just doing the scene. Mm -hmm. But you still got to you know the parameters and what's, you know, it's a lot of, it's a very, you know, complicated thing. But the more you do it, the more easier it gets, you know? Yeah. Well, it's the pressure of it was why I switched to YouTube. <laughs> I just yeah, there is pressure. Spot. <laughs> there yeah. is pressure. There's definitely <laughs> pressure. But well, I think also, it's a good pressure. You got to, I mean, it was brief, but at the sanctuary planet that, the, you know, the story ended up at, you were there. That's mm -hmm. where you guys were going. You and, 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 and your partner and your baby girl. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that set like besides, you know, an amazing episode of Gilgan's Island? Besides hot? Oh, uh, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was a hot day that day. Luckily, they had us in um, an area that had like an air conditioning blowing, like a tent with an air conditioning in okay. it. And, um, and that's another thing why we, we, when we out there, we try to get the scenes done so we can get the hell out of there before we melt. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't was, even I didn't even know if it was an outdoor shoot or not. I couldn't tell. Yeah, it was on. Uh, we shot that on I think on the Warner Brothers lot, mm -hmm. and it was some it's just outdoor you know, area and they had trees and stuff. It was all, I guess, man-made. Mm -hmm. And then, um... Mocklin made. That's how Mocklin's prefer yeah. it, being man-made. <laughs> Mo Mocklin made, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and we got the stuff done like that. It was like, I think that took like a couple of days we shot that, mm -hmm. that outdoor scene. Because like, comes... was, there was one where they, they, they got to the planet and then there was like the end scene, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the, it's amazing with... You know, the Mocklins are such, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm tired of the Mocklin stories, this, this, that. I'm like, oh, man, but the Mocklin stories are just so important they, yeah. uh, for our own society. You know, great sci-fi always holds up a mirror to, to, to society. That's just, that's one of the you know, great sci-fi series to do. And, you know, it's, it's, there's the surface level stuff. Oh, uh, you know, the Mocklins are about, you know, gender bias, you know, oh, they're against, well, they're against straight people, but, you know, in our own society, that's, you know, uh, gay, uh, uh, you know, situation. Uh, but really, it's so much, that's just surface level. The, the real thing that goes on with Mockless that we keep unfolding and peeling back every single season is it's really about long-lived uh, systemic prejudice it yeah. is embedded so deep into the society that people don't even realize that there's female mocklins or mocklins that have you know a different that would like a different way of life and it's kind of holding up a mirror to what we're going through right now in the world mm -hmm. uh with s systemic racism and you know other types of, of prejudices and also like, that. like uh what gender mutilation uh, oh yeah um, list goes on yeah, and it's, and and they, the thing with this the society, it's viewed as tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, that's their excuse. This is a tradition. This is you know that don't make it right. Yeah, you just didn't want to change it because you thought it was the right way, right thing to do. But yeah, and we and it seems it appears, I and mean, we don't know the exact situation yet. I, I'm hoping we find out in season three when it comes to the Mocklins how far back this goes because it seems like they don't even know it's just like uh since history on their planet began being written it was all curated to 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 you know feed this lie that oh only females are born you know every a few every generation which is obviously not true so it goes so much further but also we can kind of i kind of feel like just like our own society most mocklins the mocklin population they're not even aware that things have been changed, you know, that the truth is being hidden. And it kind of seems like if they were to find out, they would probably want to change. Some of them. <laughs> Some of them would. I mean, if 
this is the thing. Like some people, they find out the truth about something and then they, they kind of implode, you know, mm -hmm. something they believed in for so long that you thought was law. You thought was, you know, something even from God, wherever. And then they tell somebody takes the whole, you know, pulls the curtain back. Sai, I got you. That's yeah. not it. We've been fooling you before we even, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's the thing that back thousands upon thousands of years. Yeah. So I think that it's a dangerous thing also because now that the truth is out there, then, you know, people question what they believe in, question what people have been telling him, why you've mm -hmm. been lying to us. And like, did, did you guys know this? Or mm -hmm. was it a secret? It's a lot of things. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. All these avenues that you can go through. Yeah. I really think I'm, I don't know. Well, probably next season. Cause this is even without what's going on right now. I mean, the writers of the show have obviously had this type of, you know, thing going on in their heads because it's always been underneath a little bit in our own society. So I'm guessing in season three, we'll see the repercussions, hopefully, of what happens when the population of Machlis finds out that their entire belief system, everything that the, the way they've lived their life has been uh, a lie, purposefully uh, fed to them uh, to keep, you know, this, this thing going. Control. Mm hmm Absolute control because uh, Clyden, for instance, uh, played by Chad L. Coleman, you know, people are always like, ah, oh, Clyden. And I'm like, yeah, I love Clyden so much because also yeah. Chad just has this sparkle in his eye. That <laughs> he, even when he was playing, what was it? Ty, was it Tyrone in Walking Dead? I yeah. can't remember the character's name. Something like that. It had that sparkle in his eye even when he was lost and just pounding zombie heads i'm like there's that yeah. sparkle there and Clyden yeah. has that sparkle i love Clyden because he's so important uh bordis kind of represents what moclis could be and Clyden represents what moclis is and Clyden's well, kind of like bordis mm -hmm. is more progressive yeah and Clyden is the i guess the old school yeah, yeah. he he represents that family member that we love to death. We love him so much, but you good just old don't. Uncle Joe. Yeah, <laughs> Uncle Chad. <laughs> yeah. There's just certain things you don't bring up. They disappoint you, and you forget. Yeah. You forget they 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 have a whole different set of. Uh, of oh, there goes Uncle food. Chad again. Somebody get him some potato salad so he shut up. That's you know? right. <laughs> Stay off the politics. Don't talk about anything that's going to get him started because he's going to go on forever. That's right. Oh, man. And he's, <laughs> yeah, every time I see Clyde, I was like, man, I love him so much, but oh, he drives me nuts. And Chad knows it because I, I talked to Chad after when mm -hmm. I was on set that I didn't know it was Chad because he was in Mocklin makeup because they yeah. were like about eight background Mocklins. Mm -hmm. So there's just people coming back and forth. But he stopped. He's like, yo, what's up, man? How you doing? Nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and then we left. I was like, who the hell is that? <laughs> and, then, and then later he still on used that, to wearing the makeup he doesn't even realize it's all yeah family. so then um we know a mutual person so that person had like a little bit of a get together later that evening at this um hamburger place and everybody's you know you know fraternizing and you know you know talking and then chad was there i was like hey what's up he's like yeah i'm shooting uh orville he's like yeah he's like when were you were you on today i was like yeah i was like were you on set today and uh, i was like wait a minute was that you that said what's up to me He's like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's always shenanigans on the Orville set when you have uh, too many Mocklins. Oh, you yeah. never know where it's going to go if you have too many oh, Mocklins. Yeah. There was yeah, a little couple of shenanigans going on. <laughs> what was the? What was it like with that? That baby prop. I mean, I, I know you had the fake, <laughs> you had the fake baby at the end of the episode. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. It was. Uh, it was. <laughs> it was just. A doll that just I was just I don't know it was just a doll. It was yeah. kind of a little bit freaky, <laughs> but it well, was at least like, they had its eyes closed and not open, staring at you. Yeah, see, yeah, that, that's the thing. They superimposed a real baby. We mm -hmm. never met the real baby yeah. that was sleeping. Yeah, we just had the doll and the light. So wow, what was it? What was that? <laughs> I think because I think they bought some sort of suitcase and then they totally regeared it for the show if i recall what mm -hmm. was that 
I mean, I don't know who, who cares. I care about this. What was that suitcase like carrying it around? Was it heavy? Was it light? No, it's pretty light. It's pretty light. I mean, I'm a strong dude. So it was like, you know, I only had to carry it maybe eight feet. Because uh, yeah. the, the first thing you see me when I'm coming around the corner with, um, I forgot her name. Um, she plays the security. Oh, uh, Tala. Um, yeah, she goes, yeah, it looks heavy. Can I carry it? Yeah. Carry it. Jessica yeah. Zor. Yeah, Jessica Zor. She's awesome too. Um, yeah, that was like, it was all right. It was just, it was just big. So when I had to turn around the corner and it was against my leg, so I had to make sure, and I had to make sure my sight was in the middle of the, the hall. That's mm -hmm. why I said when I mentioned the DP and, and the speed, cause we were walking, sometimes we walked a little too fast. Sometimes we, we walked too slow. So he's like, all right, just, you know, cut it in half. And then it was cool. It was just a little cumbersome. Yeah. So when I put it on the table, I was like, okay, yeah, but I have to be, I have to be gentle. Cause I like, there's a baby in there. I can't just That's throw right. it away. <laughs> you know? Right. So I, I think you guys would pat it. If you can put a baby in there, you know, put some yeah. pillows or something in there. Yeah, uh, true. Well, you, you mentioned it right now. Uh, you know, cause that first scene was with uh, Jessica Zor, uh, whole conversation, getting you set up in the room and all that stuff. Uh, you said she's awesome. What was it like working with Jessica Zors as as Tala? She's the sweetest woman. You know, she's you know ready to work, and and she does that. She has her own twinkle in her eye too. Um, <laughs> yeah, but she's awesome. She everybody 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 on that set was awesome. And like, I, there's not a bad thing I could say about anybody on that thing. Oh come on! Let's keep keep thinking hard. Let's see. No, just kidding. If you had something bad to say, <laughs> I'd I'd defend them. I'd probably say it too. There's some jerks I've worked with in the past, but that's okay. That's for another show. Yeah, that gaffer. He's just putting tape all over that place. He don't care. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was everybody was cool. Jessica was cool because I remember I saw her on the ESPYS and. I, I, I told her that I loved her dress that she was wearing on the SGO. Oh, She's like, oh, yeah, thank I remember you that. so much. Yeah, I was like, because that's the first time I saw her. I was like, who's that? I was like, wait a minute, I have a scene with her? Cool! <laughs> well, you were in so much of that episode. How long did it, uh, how many d days did it take to get all your scenes? Um, Because I was out there in LA for like, I think two weeks. And I didn't start shooting till maybe five days in, like that Thursday. So mm -hmm. I think I was on set technically for like five days i think so yeah five maybe six days of shooting wow. that's a dream that's a yeah, dream man. Yeah, <laughs> man. and just being in la and yeah. just and like we they put us in the hotel that they did lethal weapon <laughs> two and across the street from the hotel was the nakatomi building from die hard yeah uh -huh. it was like this is, I was like, yeah, this is surreal, man. I was like, wait a minute, that's the Nakatomi building for real. Yeah, and they were it looks having just like, like it. <laughs> I think they were having like a 20th anniversary for Die Hard. So they were setting up like they were going to show the movie. And I mm -hmm. saw Bruce Willis at Universal Studios that like the like a day before. And I was putting all together together. I was like, oh, OK. Well, you had a whole Die Hard experience on top of your Orville experience then. Yeah, this is like, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> too much well, man well other experiences i i do have to say uh because you do a lot of uh voiceover work you know video mm -hmm. games things like that yep. you played uh wendell white in <laughs> red dead redemption <laughs> 2 which yes, was a yeah which was a hilarious little side you know a little side yep. story strangers you know the game has strangers and you were the, you know there's the two prisoners that arthur comes across <laughs> and they escape prison and they're just bickering all the time like two yep. Mocklins that have been married for 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 many many years except, uh, except the chains but that's all right yeah that's all mr right. black and i was mr white and he did all that stuff and all that craziness and we trying to work together and stuff like that <laughs> well we'll have to have a whole red dead redemption conversation at some point. <laughs> i went to san diego comic-con last mm -hmm. year and they had an orville experience yeah and uh, it was it was it was cool and just seeing but seeing like they had the Mocklin like bust yeah and, mm -hmm. and, and I'm looking like man I was I was doing that yeah. <laughs> let's see if this one fits yeah yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Did, did they have to take a, a mold of you uh, for the Mocklin makeup or did they just have a bunch 
bunch of uh, hoods ready to. Well, yeah, the, to no, out. they didn't. That's what I thought they were going to do, and that's what I was kind of excited for. The, but they had they had cowls. They called them cowls. Mm, cowls. That's it. Yeah. So they were just basically just fit over like a, a hoodie, and then um, the makeup artist would put the. Uh, other um what do you call it the uh just the applications and yeah the prosthetics mm -hmm. and and it took an hour to put on and it took an hour to take off wow they've gotten it down though that's really good for that kind of yeah set up I, I was preparing for like two three hours in the makeup chair and because you see all these movies that have like heavy special effects and like yeah we have to be here at six mm -hmm. and we got, we got started shooting at 12 and but yeah, he was very proficient and he knew what he was doing and we got in and out and it was awesome. Wow. Yeah, I'm wondering because I don't know if, because Howard Berger's the main special effects mm -hmm. uh, uh, guru and uh, I don't know if he invented the cowl thing, but it really does seem to save a lot of time. So it's, it's pretty brilliant. Oh, yeah. I expected to see that across the sci-fi board going forward. Let's go to... Your final day of shooting, you get wrapped. Yeah. Did you cry? No. <laughs> you should have. No, I didn't cry. <laughs> I was just like, it was just, I just had so much fun. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's that's the actor life. Like you, you basically, you get hired to get fired, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but you were a superhero sci-fi superhero for five days yeah yeah uh, it was it was it was worth it i i you know i absorbed every moment of it i tried to be in the moment and it, when it was over even like at the end like at the hotel seth and adrian palicki and scott were like they came to have drinks mm -hmm. and i was chilling with them and it was just so freaking wow, awesome wow that's amazing yeah, it it's was, a, like a family, and you. And yeah, it's it's amazing to hear that you came in for a few days, for for one episode, and you were part of the family. Yeah, I see. Well, I almost did. Kind of, I got a little misty eye when Seth gave me a hug and said that you did an awesome job. So yeah, I got a little. I got a little misty. <laughs> All right, but, good. That's what I wanted yeah. to hear. I wanted to. Hear, yeah. I wanted to hear that you cried. I cried inside. I cried yeah, I inside cried. internally. I cried. All the, the the tears went down my neck and so on. <laughs> well, what's great though is Torin is still on that sanctuary planet, and I'm sure we're going to be returning in one of these seasons to that sanctuary planet. So maybe we'll be able to see you again. It's a possibility. Stop threatening me with a good time, man. <laughs> I just want to give you hope. You That's what the Orville does. Up, man. No, let's not give the hopes <laughs> up. The Orville gives hope. <laughs> so, so hopefully, you know, they'll, 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 they'll write that planet in again and you know, hey. they'll be like, hey, here's here's my here's my little baby in the suitcase. They're a lot yep. bigger now. Hollywood's closed mm -hmm. for for live action stuff. Uh, we don't know when it's going to open back up, but hopefully, when it does, uh, hope uh, I'm sure you would love to get some more sci-fi gigs. I would love know, to. Right? I would love to do that more stuff. I mean, I mean, considering probably it's going to be out in California. Yeah. Um, uh, but I don't mind. It's it's. I'm ready to do it. You know, it's 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 a you know, what sci-fi? What what? Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, but I'm like that with I'm like that with you know all my stuff I do. You know, I love acting. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Whether I got to be a murderer or a cop or whatever, I just love working. Uh, maybe we'll get you on that new Lord of the Rings show. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'll do it. Give me a Hobbit or something. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know about Hobbit. Or could I be? What was the other ones? Uh, orcs. The big. orcs. The orcs. Oh, geez, you want to go hardcore? Yeah, I could do you, that. You're ready for more makeup. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I wasn't even going that far. this. Yes. But what if you just get it to be an ant? <laughs> an <laughs> ant? It's, it's a tree. They kind of move kind of slow. A little bit. They move a little bit slow for me. Yeah, not very good at the cardio. <laughs> nah, this is this this too you know too much too much laid back. I'm from New York. We're used to walking really fast. This is going to be a stretch. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Mr. Sean Andrew, actor, now sci-fi extraordinaire. I want to thank you for stopping by. Egotastic, fun time. It was a fun time, and uh, I don't know about you, but uh, 
I know I know about me, but what about you? Are you looking forward to more Orville? Oh yeah, I'm waiting. You know, come on, let's go, let's get yeah. this party started. We're all waiting, <laughs> and I'm That's sure we right. got a little bit longer to wait than we already planned on waiting. Uh, oh yeah, the world, the world's uh, hey, the world's doing some stuff right now. It's, yeah, it's got we're some th- things working through. The world's on a little on, on fire a little bit, but you know. Yeah, but eventually we'll get, we'll get to some we'll get to some new universes. <laughs> oh, definitely. So, so Sean, one thing I do want to say to you that we, you know, it's our it's our a greeting. It's the way that we impart our love uh, to each other is I want to say Jalo Jalong and prosper. Jalo Jalong and prosper. What?